Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. How did Ferrari accidentally create Lamborghini? Come let's unveil the truth. Ferruccio Lamborghini, the man behind one of the biggest luxury car brands in the world, was born in 1916 in Italy. He was the son of two grape farmers and had an optimistic outlook on life. Growing up, he learned the value of hard work and discovered his passion for mechanics. After graduating from technical college, he worked as a mechanic on the island of Rhodes, where he learned about the military's tractors and diesel trucks. During World War II, Italy faced financial ruin and food shortages, leading to many citizens going hungry. Ferruccio decided to change course and become an engineer, attending a technical college in Bologna. He later opened his own mechanical workshop on Rhodes Island, where he faced a problem with his job. When he returned to Italy, he saw a market emerging, as poor farmers couldn't afford to buy tractors after the war and the price of petrol skyrocketed due to post-war prohibitions. Ferruccio seized this opportunity by buying a cheap British Morris engine at auction and modifying it to use a fuel atomizer. This innovation allowed the tractors to switch to cheaper diesel fuel, which was an incredible solution for his country's fuel problem. The first Lamborghini tractor was born, and he used a smaller frame to reduce costs. Lamborghini started slowly, making one tractor a week by himself. His cost-cutting techniques proved effective, and he eventually opened his own factory and hired staff to speed up production. To compete with larger tractor companies, his father allowed him to use the family farm as collateral for a bank loan. Ferruccio was excited about the potential of his business, but knew that if his company failed, his family could lose their farm. Furthermore, Ferruccio designed his own engine, meaning Lamborghini tractors would no longer rely on modifying the British engine and could create their own engines in-house. The Italian government announced loans to Italian farmers, purchasing Italian-made farming machinery, and since Ferruccio was now making the engines himself, his machinery qualified. The demand for Lamborghini tractors increased significantly, and he hosted a tractor-pulling competition in his hometown every year. As Lamborghini tractors continued to grow, they became one of the largest tractor manufacturers in Italy, and he became one of the richest men in the country. In the 1950s, Ferruccio Ferrari was a passionate enthusiast of luxury grand touring cars, particularly from Italian manufacturers like Alfa Romeo, Ferrari, and Maserati. He owned cars from these brands but always found problems that prevented them from being perfect. Ferraris were seen as the pinnacle of success and sought after by celebrities and the ultra-rich. Ferruccio owned cars from all these Italian brands. He disliked his Ferrari 250 GT and described it as too noisy and rough to be a proper road car. After having the clutch fixed a number of times, Ferruccio decided to take it to a mechanic at his factory. They discovered that the clutch used in the Ferrari was the same clutch as the ones used in the Lamborghini tractors. Ferruccio upgraded the clutch with something better suited to a luxury sports car and immediately went to visit Ferrari's creator Enzo Ferrari. Enzo Ferrari was known for his wicked temper and thin patience, but Ferruccio felt like he was doing Ferrari a favor by suggesting an improvement to his car. However, Enzo did not see it this way, and he got very angry with Ferruccio. He told him that the clutch was not the problem. The problem was, you don't know how to drive a Ferrari, and you break the clutch. On this day, Ferruccio vowed to make his own cars that would be better than Ferraris, and the best cars that money could buy. This is the mantra that Lamborghini's car company was founded on building the perfect car. In 1963, Ferruccio targeted the Turin Auto Show to announce his arrival in the automobile industry. With the experience of Ferruccio and the infrastructure already in place from its tractor factories, he and his team were able to get a prototype ready for the car show in just four months. The first car, the Lamborghini 350 GT, sold 13 cars on release, and over the next two years, 120 cars were produced and sold, giving Lamborghini a respectable star in the automobile industry. In the 1960s, after a crash, the team of Ferruccio and his team showed their prototype to a fruit show hoping it would be cheaper to produce. Fujo was initially against the idea, but was eager to grow his car business and beat Enzo Ferrari. Ferruccio decided to use the new race car his team had designed as a marketing tool to get people talking about his brand. The new model was completed just two days before the 1966 Geneva Motor Show, and it was called the Lamborghini Maiura. The engine placement in the Lamborghini Miura was inspired by Formula One cars and was an innovation that would soon become widely adopted. The car quickly became iconic, seen in some of the biggest films at the time, and celebrities adopted the car as the ultimate show of wealth. However, disaster struck when Ferruccio's companies were thriving throughout the 60s. 
Lamborghini Ultimate Bills was rivaling the top cars of the day, including Ferrari and Lamborghini tractors, were continuing to produce some of the finest tractors in the world. In 1973, the global oil crisis led to the high cost of manufacturing and the demand for high-performance cars plummeting. Ferruccio sold his remaining 49% stake in Lamborghini and retired to an estate in central Italy. The Agricultural Machinery Group purchased Lamborghini tractors from Ferruccio and still owns them today. Lamborghini automobiles faced more turbulence over the years, with the economic and political situation in Italy worsening over the 70s. By 1980, the iconic Italian sports car brand was picked up by successful French brothers who purchased the failing company at a discounted rate of $3 million. In 1987, Lamborghini was sold to Chrysler for $25 million, and Chrysler briefly saw some profit before sales in the US dropped. An Indonesian conglomerate paid $40 million for the privilege of owning Lamborghini, reigniting the brand. A financial crash in the Asian market forced the company to be sold once again. The strong European markets at the time meant Volkswagen was going on a huge spending spree. And in 1988, they purchased Lamborghini along with several other car brands like Bentley. Today, the Volkswagen Group still own the Lamborghini brand under their subsidiary company Audi. While Lamborghini has gone through many ups and downs since Ferruccio sold his company, it seems like Volkswagen made a very smart purchase. The 21st century has seen a huge resurgence in demand for supercars, and Lamborghini has been at the forefront of that demand. Nowadays, Lamborghinis are the go-to supercar choice for new money millennials and are a symbol of wealth and success. Thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to explore more about us in our channel.